A little warning before we start, this video is for educational purposes only. Do not apply the techniques that you see and learn to any device or network for which you do not have explicit permission from the owners. Let's get hacking. Today we're going to be working with BetterCap. BetterCap allows for a range of attacks on Wi-Fi networks and also on other low energy networks like Bluetooth for example. BetterCap will allow us to implement a man in the middle attack. Let's launch BetterCap. All right, we're on. The first thing an attacker can do is launch a network prop. This will allow the attacker to see everyone on the network and what device are available to attack. We can do this by typing net.prop on. This will start the detection phase and we can already see some of the devices that I have connected here to my Wi-Fi, like my Nintendo Switch, my Samsung TV, and my laptop. Now, to list all the devices that we have available on this network, we can go for network.show and this will give us a list of all the devices and their MAC addresses and their IBs. This will give the attacker the power they will need to launch the next attack, which is an ARP spoofing. For an ARP spoofing attack, we're going to be using my MSI laptop. In an ARP spoofing attack, we're going to convince my laptop, in this case, that he's talking to the router and not to an attack. So this way, all the connections will be basically first directed to the attacker, and then they will be sent over to the router, allowing us to see everything this endpoint is doing. To launch this attack, we're going to use this IP over here of my laptop. I'm going to copy it. We're going to set the ARP spoofing target to this laptop. Afterwards, we're going to launch the attack by setting ARP.spoof on. You can see that forwarding has been enabled, and now everything that I will do on my laptop will be visible to me once I start sniffing the network. We can start the sniffer by typing net.sniff on now let's do some stuff on the laptop all right so let's try to visit amazon for example you can see that we're basically capturing everything this laptop is doing check it out over here we can see everything that's being sent as packets and check this out we've managed to see every link that was requested by amazon.com which is very scary and this goes on to other websites as well so if I was, for example, to visit Facebook over here, you'll see that I've basically managed to capture every link that this laptop is connecting to. But it's not only just the URLs that I'm seeing from this user. I can also see every traffic that's coming out of this laptop, which is pretty scary. So I'm going to see props, for example, from Origin or EA Games if I'm using those services. And this will basically allow you to see everything that a person is doing just because you're on their network. You can see the Origin heartbeats over here. Those are basically connecting to the EA servers. But is that the scary part? No, not yet. The scary part is the fact that an attacker can now redirect your traffic to a different website than the one you have requested. Let me show you how. First of all, let's turn off uh, this network sniffer and leave the ARP attack on because we're going to need that for the next step. Clear this console a bit. Now, what I'm going to do is launch a DNS spoofing attack. In this attack, I'm going to trick this laptop to go to a different website than the one that was requested by the user. I'm going to be targeting my Amazon. And for this, I want to redirect them to a website that I have made. We can easily start a website by running service Apache 2. This will give us an empty website that we can access anywhere on this network. And this website will be available on our IP. And our IP in this case is this wireless LAN 192.168. 37 so if i was to visit this one i will get this apache page now let's redirect every user on this network to this website so we can start now the spoofing attack then a spoof on everyone who's going to visit my amazon they're going to be redirected to our apache website well let's try it out my amazon.com we've basically redirected the user to a website of our choosing now let me demonstrate what will happen if you log in an HTTP website that's not using SSL security or any other type of security. So you type in your username, you type in your password, and then you click on login. You can see that I've managed to capture the username and the password immediately. I didn't even need to do anything extra on top of this attack to see what was going on on that website. But that's not the scary part because for login pages now, many websites actually only offer HTTPS web pages but how many http websites are there still out there according to a new crawler ninja list we still have many websites that are in the top 1 million websites visited every day which are still using http let's take a look at a couple of those myshopify.com 
and it's not using HTTPS. You can see it over here. Let's try the Washington University. Yeah, they are not using HTTPS. So there are still many websites out there not using HTTPS, which poses a risk for you as a user. Now, let me demonstrate what else could happen even when a password and a username are not involved. Now, because the content of this website is transferred over the air without any encryption, we can modify it while it's still in transit. So here's a simple JavaScript that will simply wait until the website have loaded. Then it will get all the link elements and modify it to a website of our choosing. In this case, I'm going to redirect all the URLs in this website to hackthissite.org. Well, let's try it out. We're going to be using an HTTP proxy for this attack. So all the HTTP requests will have to go through this proxy before they are shown to our attack target. Let's set this HTTP proxy to inject JavaScript code. We can do this by set HTTP.proxy inject GS, and then you have to give it the path to the JavaScript file where you've written the script that you want to be executed. script.js all right awesome then we have to turn this http proxy on it is now on and ready uh, we've already redirected all the traffic so we're ready to run this attack let's try to reload this page check this out every link has been changed now to point to this hack this site wherever i click it will take me to this site. Even the ones that are down here, like this one. Even the social media links, oh damn. So changing parts of the website is a major security risk, but we can even do things that are more sneaky. We can completely change the content of this website. Let me show you. I'm going to overwrite the document with some HTML of my choosing. Now we will have to turn off the proxy so it will take the new version and then turn it on again now let's go to our website voila now you can modify the content of this website before it hits the target we can now show the user that's trying to access this website whatever content we want just because we're on the same network as them we can also do stuff like insert images change the fonts change basically anything we want on this website i hope you get my gesture of how much an http website can be changed while it's in transit so the message to take home here today is HTTP websites are dangerous and they will put you in harm. It's not just about checking the URLs that you're clicking. You need to also check the URL up there and make sure that it's a secure URL that they are using HTTPS and not HTTP. I would certainly recommend steering away from websites that are not using HTTPS unless you absolutely have to. Well, the stuff I've shown you today, they are pretty scary, I admit. But we can actually do something about it. And that solution is pretty simple. All you need is a good VPN that will protect your traffic and encrypt everything that's going on from your workstation to the internet. So if I was to turn on my open VPN over here and then go on a website, any website of my choosing, for example, let's go again to Amazon. You can see that I didn't capture any of that traffic here anymore because now everything is encrypted from my laptop the moment it leaves it and all the way and using a vpn is not that hard i'm going to show you how to make your own vpn in my next video so make sure to check it out now the moment i disconnect this vpn we're back to detecting everything and this basically proves the importance of having a vpn on your network regardless of where you are whether you are at home or at a public library it's all the same you should be always careful about who can see your data and who's using your network stay safe and see you next time